Hello. Hello, good evening, my friends. Welcome to another English class. We're going to start. And let's see who do we have here. I'm sorry, ¿quién tenemos por acá? I guess most of the participants are here. Creo que la mayoría de los estudiantes ya están por acá, los participantes. So, let's see. This is the class, the name of the class for tonight. Uh, it is present continuous for future events. A very important grammar structure, una estructura gramatical super importante, very important. So, uh, just to remember, we have studied present, con, uh, simple present. Solo para recordarles, ya, ya estudiamos el presente. Uh, remember verbs, con los verbos. And the third person, que a la tercera persona le agregamos S, ¿verdad? For negatives, don't or doesn't. And for questions, does or do. ¿Verdad? Entonces, ese es el presente simple. Now we're going to study present continuous. Que es eh, el presente continuo se le llama a la estructura que llevan los verbos ING. ¿Ok? It's for future events. Para las cosas que van a pasar próximamente. Ok, aquí tenemos Nelson y Ricardo van de camino. Ok, thank you for telling. Gracias por comentarme. Uh, si es así, pues ya estoy este, con la información de que ustedes van rumbo y pues les voy a preguntar a Nelson y a Ricardo hasta que lleguen a sus hogares. Ahí me comentan. You tell me when you get home and then you can participate. Ok, no problem. Ok. Bueno, antes de pasar lista, just to remember, yesterday we were talking about dates. Estamos hablando acerca de fechas, ¿verdad? So, as you can see here, we have the months of the year. Tenemos los meses del año. Just for you to know, solo para que lo sepan. <clears throat> Aquí tenemos months of the year. And I'm going to pronounce, uh, I'm going to, to, to say the pronunciation because I have listened some of you. Maybe you, you are kind of confused with the pronunciation. Están medio confundidos algunos. Comparte la pronunciación que tenemos los meses del año. Just give me a second. So, uh, the months of the years are, are like this. Son así. Uh, January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, December. Sé que algunos uh, pueden decir December because September is like uh, with no problem. Here we have also October, but no, it's December. Okay, so here we have this. And December, January, April, no, April, April. In my opinion, these are the most confusing verbs. January, January, January. February, March, um, April, May, 
June, July, August, September, October, November, December. Okay. So um, just to check, we're going to do this. Um, we're going to say two things. The the year in which you were born, el año en que nacieron y su fecha de cumpleaños, okay? For example, yesterday I told you that. Ayer le dije eso. Teacher, yep. I have a question. Tell me. So when you talk about with the date, uh, for example, when you use a uh, year, you can uh, uh, talk more short the, the or sim simple the the number of the year. So uh, it depends uh, or. Or, or se puede hacer también con, con los meses. When you say you talk short, what do you mean? ¿A for, qué te example, for example, when you use, o sea, no decís así como 1986, sino que decís. Mm -hmm. uh, ok, ok. Uh, se dice, quiero ver. Uh, uh, 19, 1983. 1983. 86, uh -huh. ¿A eso te yeah. refieres? Ya, yeah, ya, yeah, ya. Yeah. Ok. Eh, For example, here we have uh, los años para comenzar. To start, you can say it um, by using two and two numbers. For example, 1999 instead of saying 1199, que es un poquito más extenso, que es 1999. Así como lo decimos en español, pero en inglés podemos decir 1999. In the case of... Uh, Uh, 2003, se puede decir, o 2003, or in this case, uh, 2023, el 2023, ¿verdad? En lugar de decir 2023, okay. But here in, Salvador, uh, here in Spanish we say, for example, in 94. Normalmente no decimos, ah, yo nací en el 94, no, nací en el 83, Normalmente en inglés no necesariamente se dice así. Pero sí se puede decir in the 90s, in the 80s, okay? You can say the 70s and so on. De esa manera, okay? So, um, here we have, I was born in 1996. My birthday is, eh, I'm sorry, se me fue. Algo. I'm sorry. I'm going to. I'm going to erase this. This. Falto el on. Okay, en el chat ya puse un. El ejemplo. Ok, let's see. Here. Sería de esta manera. Ok. I was born in 1996. My birthday is on September 23rd. Okay. I'm going to wait for your answers here in the chat. Espero, espero su respuesta. Ahí está el ejemplo en el chat también. So let's see uh, about your year utilizando in, utilizando on. So when when I talk uh, uh, 2023, it's correctly. But, mm -hmm. I, but I can say it uh, two zero two three. It's it's correct or no? Yeah, well, not 
not mainly correct, but it is like understandable. Es entendible, pero no es la mejor manera. Podría ser 2003 en lugar okay. de 2003, ¿verdad? Por ejemplo, es casi como en español. Eh, nací en el año 2003. Se escucha como algo extraño, ¿verdad? Uh -huh. En lugar de decir, ajá, en eh, 2003. Uh -huh. So, you can say eh, 2003. Ahí sí lo puedes decir, porque esos van los pares en pares. 2003. Okay. Uh -huh. Es más aceptable. Ok. I'm going to wait for your answers. Okay, we're going to start with, let me check who is the first one. We're going with Miguel. Okay, Miguel, and then Ivan. Could you read yours? Podrías leer la tuya, por favor? I was born in 1996. Mm -hmm. My birthday is on August 10th. Perfect. That's it, Ivan, and then Gracia. I was born in 1993. My birthday is on March 29. Okay, thank you very much. Gracia, and then Wendy. I was born in 1997. My birthday is on my night. Night, thank you. Casi el Día de las Madres, gracias. Almost Mother's Day. Ok, Wendy and Joana. Ok, Wendy. Ok, good evening. Good evening. I was born in, I was born in 1997. My birthday is on April 15th. Thank you. Joana and Doris. I was born in 1995. My birthday is June 28. Thank you, Joanna. Doris and Ricardo. I was born in 1980. 
26. My birthday is on December 19th. Thank you, uh, Ricardo and Brian. Si puedes, Ricardo, si no, relax. Yes, yes, I'm here. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. I was I was born in 1990. Mm -hmm. My birthday is on April 19th. Thank you. Brian and Cristina. So, I was born in 2000. My birthday is on August 8th. Mm -hmm. Oh, también puede ser en 2000. Oh, 2000. Thank you, Brian. Very nice. Cristina and Laura. Hello. Hello there. I was born in 1991. My birthday is April 27th. Mm -hmm. April 27th. Thank you. And let's see Laura and then Hector. Hello. Um, my, I was born in 1996. My birthday is on October 14th. 14th, bien, solo faltó la TH. Uh, felicidades, happy birthday. Atrasado, Laura, estado <laughs> cumpliendo años. Nice. Sí, el sábado. Congratulations, ¿no? Ok, nice. Espero que lo hemos pasado súper bien. Very nice. Excelente, excelente. Thank you, Laura. Nice. Uh, Héctor and Jasmine, please. Okay, I was born in 1977. My birthday is on January 23. Thank you. 23rd, sería. 23rd, actually. Thank you. Okay, okay. Very okay. nice. Uh, Jasmine and Imelda. Uh, I was born in 1995. My birthday is. On October 4th. Perfect. Imelda and Wilmer. Imelda. Okay, let's go with Wilmer. Uh, and good, and good evening, teacher. Uh, good evening. I was, I was born in um, 1000. Uh, 9 80, 80, 88. Mm -hmm. My birthday is on February uh, 19. Okay, okay. That's perfect. Thank you, Wilmer. So, checking this, revisando esto. Um, um, Noticing, me estoy, me estoy dando cuenta que. Ok, Imelda, me dice que no puedes desactivar el micrófono. Creo que no lo puedes activar, quizás. Ok, but no problem. Ya vamos a ver entonces cómo continuamos. Ok, my friends, you are very young. Están bastante jóvenes todos. Solo dos están casi de mi edad. De ahí los demás están súper. Disfruten. Recuerdo cuando tenían su edad. Eran tiempos mozos. Ok. Nice. We go now with the topic present continuous for future events. The topic for um well the the vocabulary is this keywords to express uh future present continuous. Esas palabras las vamos a utilizar más adelante. Okay. So for this, here we have today, tonight, tomorrow morning, next Thursday, uh this weekend. Until the end of this year, as soon as, que significa tan pronto como, por ejemplo, you finish, tú, tú terminas. O tan pronto como tú envíes el reporte, tan pronto como tú llegues. Okay. Okay. I'm going to repeat. Uh, today is ahora. Tonight is esta noche. Tomorrow morning is mañana en la mañana. Next Thursday is el próximo jueves. Puede ser next Friday or next Saturday, como sea. This weekend is este fin de semana. Until the end of this year. Eh, digamos, hasta el final eh, de este año. 
o al final del año. As soon as, tan pronto como. Okay. Today, tonight, tomorrow morning, next Thursday, this weekend, until the end of this year, as soon as. I'm going to check the attendance list and you tell me hi, hello, good evening. And then you tell me one of these phrases. Bueno, creo que como ya me saludaron la mayoría, solo me dicen la frase. No problem. Eh, Cristina, hello there. Hello. Hello. Una de tomorrow, frases. tomorrow morning. Perfect. Thank you. Brian. And Here. then David. Okay. Mm, Brian, maybe it's not yeah. there. No. Yep. Uh, ship. Um. So. Um. So only, only uh, uh, about the uh, the future, right? Okay. Here we have the list. Ahí tenemos la lista. Uh huh. Only pronounce one of this. Mm. Well, tomorrow, tomorrow morning. Yes, mm -hmm. Okay. Good, David. Hi, teacher. Hello, David. Today is Wednesday. Perfect. Thank you. Uh, Doris. And then Stephanie. This weekend. Good one. I don't know if we have Stephanie. If not, we go with Gracia. Hi, good evening. Hi. Tonight. Hello. Hello. Who is Imelda? Today, teacher. Thank you, Imelda. Okay, ya pudiste activarlo. Thank you. Héctor. Sí, se me había como congelado la. Mm -hmm. No podía. A veces sucede. Okay, thank you, Imelda. Héctor, are you there? Hi, teacher. This weekend. Perfect. Eh, Iván, creo que va de paso todavía. Joana. Hi, teacher. Hello, Iván. Hi, here. Thank you. Uh, uh, next Thursday. Good one. Thank you, Joana. As soon as. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Uh, Laura. Hello, today. Hello. Thank you. Mm, Luz. I don't know if. Uh, tonight. Night. Good. Thank you. Miguel. Until the end of the, on this year. Thank you. Okay. Nelson, I don't know if you're there. I guess you're driving. Creo que todavía manejando. No problem. Uh, Ricardo, no sé si va manejando todavía. No problem. Yes, yes, I am here. Okay, thank you. See ya next Thursday. Thank you, Ricardo. Uh, Wendy? This weekend. Good. Uh, Wilmer? Hi, uh, present uh, today. Thank you. And Jasmine. Next Tuesday. Mm -hmm. Thank you. We're going to use these phrases later. Vamos a utilizar esas frases dentro de poco, okay? Aquí tenemos lo siguiente. Okay. Present continuous. We use present continuous to talk about arrangements for events at a time later than now. Utilizamos el present continuous siempre para hablar de eventos a futuro, pero que están cercanos. Ok, listen. Hay dos maneras, bueno, hay casi tres maneras de utilizar el futuro. El más común es el will. Cuando decimos I will go, yo iré. El otro es el going to, yo voy a ir. Will and going to are the two uh, forms of future. Estas son las dos formas del futuro. Will, going to. Will es para algo que va a pasar, pero no hay seguridad. Going to es algo que hay mucha seguridad de que va a pasar, pero el continuous con ing es que ya va a pasar. Ya. Tonight, ahora en la noche, tomorrow, mañana o este fin de semana, pero ya casi pasa y es súper seguro. Ok. So, In this case, um, here we have, tenemos el sujeto más el verbo to be más el verbo principal, que es un gerundio, o sea que lleva ing más el complemento. Here we have an example. 
I am meeting the interns tomorrow. Utilizamos el verbo to be, o sea, am, is, are. Aquí se traduciría literalmente, estoy reuniendo a los internos mañana. Pero, ya con el significado sería, me voy a reunir con los internos mañana. This action will take place in the future. Tomorrow. Esta acción va a tomar eh, lugar en el futuro. Tenemos aquí, what time is Maria interviewing the people? ¿A qué hora María va a eh, entrevistar a las personas? She is interviewing them at 5 p.m. Ella los va a entrevistar a las 5 p.m. I am writing the report next week. Voy a eh, escribir el reporte de la siguiente semana. Nice. And I am sending it as soon as you finish. Le dice, qué bien. Entonces voy a enviarlo tan pronto como tú termines. Well, more explanation. Vamos a más explicación. Let me show you this. Okay. Mm, we're going to focus. Okay. Nos vamos a enfocar en ciertas partes de esta hoja. Y se la voy a enviar siempre. Ok, eh, ten, tenemos uh, affirmative form. Tenemos la forma positiva o afirmativa, ¿verdad? Que se utiliza así. Obviamente que en lo, aparte del am, podemos utilizar is y también are, ¿ok? La negativa simplemente va a tener el not, I am not, you are not, pero supongamos, supongamos que esa es la positiva, ya que no tenemos una, no tenemos una, ¿cómo se llama? Sorry, this is not available. A menos que... Ok, si eh, suprimimos acá, por ejemplo, el not, simplemente nos vamos a dar cuenta que estas son las positivas. Ok. Porque el not son las que las hacen negativas, ¿verdad? Entonces, veamos acá. I am coming, you are coming, he is coming, we are coming. Entonces, uh, something that I needed to, to check, algo que necesito que vean, es el verbo to be. I am, I am, perdón, you are, is, y así sucesivamente. Sujeto, verbo to be, y el verbo con ing. Para las negativas, solo vamos a utilizar not, como parece aquí. Ahora, vamos a poner atención acá, donde dice, Pay attention to the following verbs. Vamos a poner atención en los verbos que están acá. Ok. Why? Porque como se va a agregar ing para que tenga más sentido. Ok. Aquí tenemos lo siguiente. <clears throat> Normalmente cuando lleva una e al final se, se cambia por i, ¿verdad? ing cuando lleva solo a uno, ¿verdad? La mayoría, si se dan cuenta, solo agrega ING. Son algunos que se le agrega, por ejemplo, otra consonante, por ejemplo, stop, stopping, plan, planning, ¿verdad? Sit, sitting. Pero el resto es más práctico, así, ¿ok? So, present continuous. Otro momento les envío esto. I'm going to send this uh, picture so you can have a better explanation about this. So, ya viendo esto, tenemos esto. Complete the following sentences. Use the conversation above to help. Tenemos una conversación, pero obviamente 
¿Alguna idea que hará falta en, esta, en este espacio? He is present with the new employee. Y la otra es, I informing the community about that. Any volunteers? ¿Algún voluntario antes de ver la conversación? He's presenting. Yep. That's it. I-N-G, I-N-G. Yes. Okay, and what about the other? ¿Alguna idea con mm, Casi. Sería un verbo. I am. I am, I am informing. I am. Mm -hmm. Así es. I am informing uh, the committee about that. Okay. So for this, we're going to have a conversation to have like a, a, a very clear idea, para tener una mejor idea sobre esto. So okay. it's, it's am because in for, in for the verb is E-I-N-G. Mm -hmm. Okay. Sí, el will y el going to no lo vamos a usar. Yo lo puse solo como ejemplo. Aquí el verbo to be es el que va. Am, is, are. Aquí era presenting. Sí, le, recuerden cómo les dije. Sujeto, subject, verb be. And the, the base form plus ing. La forma base que es present más el ing. Aquí está informing. Uh -huh. Entonces, ya vamos a ver más ejemplos. We're going to check more examples so we can have a, like a better idea. Una mejor idea. Okay. We have a conversation between Peter and Henry. Okay. This conversation is very important. It says, hello, Henry. I have a question. Who is representing the company in the yearly conference? No es conference. Es conference. Eh, la primera E no se pronuncia. Conference. Friends. Hey Peter. Well, Maria is, but Julie is attending the conference this year too. So I see. But if Julie is attending, who is delivering the presentations for the CEO next week? Guess what? I am. I am presenting with Hector, the new accountant. Sounds great. So I am informing the committee about it. Uh, Peter and Henry have this, uh, they have this conversation. Hola, Henry. Uh, tengo una pregunta. ¿Quién va a representar la compañía en la conferencia anual? Hey, Peter. Bueno, María. María es la que va. Pero Julie va a atender la conferencia este año también. Así que ya veo. Pero si Julie eh, va a atender la conferencia, ¿quién va a entregar las presentaciones para el gerente general la siguiente semana. Adivina quién. Guess what significa adivina qué. Guess what, adivina qué. Yo, yo voy, yo voy a presentar con Héctor el nuevo contador. Suena genial. Entonces voy a informar al comité sobre esto. Yo sé que aquí dice I am informing. Dice yo estoy informando. Literalmente eso significa. That's the, the meaning. If we have it like that. But the real meaning, el significado real, va más allá de eso. Va, I am informing significa yo voy a informar. Aunque sé que am significa yo estoy. ¿Verdad? No significa voy, pero así se entiende. So, conference. No, conference. Conference. Guess what? Ok. Guess what? Accountant. Escuchen. Sounds. No es stones. Es con A. Sounds great. Sounds great. So I'm informing the committee. Pueden decir committee. Oh. Pero normalmente es committee. Committee about it. About it. Okay. I need to have a, a screenshot, please. And we're going to, to practice. Ahora que ven estas otras oraciones. Teacher, I have a question. Go ahead. What do you say delivering? Ah, delivering es entregar. Ah, ¿dónde está delivering? But, uh, who is delivering the presentation? ¿Quién va a entregar las presentaciones? Entonces, el delivering es who is delivering, ¿quién va a entregar? Aunque sabemos que la palabra delivery es entrega. ¿Verdad? Como los que andan, andaban en Hugo o en Pedidos Ya y todo eso. Uh -huh. Ese es delivery. 
pero es Thanks. como uh -huh. who is delivering, quién va entregando, pero deliver es el verbo que significa entregar. Okay, my friends, I'm going to create the theme so we can have some practice and then we're going to come back and check what do we have here. Okay, my friends, see you in a moment. Lo ven un momento. Let's practice a little bit. Okay, Hector, maybe you could accept the request. Te llegó la solicitud, Hector. Hola, teacher, sí, pero estoy tratando de entrar en la computadora, pero no tengo audio. Tengo audio del teléfono, sí. Pero podría a través del teléfono. Sí, de hecho voy a cancelar lo de la computadora porque sí me está dando problema. Vaya, ya te envío la solicitud entonces para que puedas entrar. Ok.
Well, we're going to continue with the conversation. We already practiced, ya practicamos. So, volunteers for this. Um, remember conference, guess what, accountant, towns, I am informing the committee. Any volunteer? If not, I can, I can select some of you. Mm. For... Okay, Brian, you want to, uh, you want to practice with Joanna, right? Yeah. Okay, please, Peter and Henry. I don't know who is going to start. I'm Peter. Okay, you're Peter. Hello, Henry. I have a question. Who is a representing representing the company in the yearly conference? Hi, Peter. Well, Maria is, but Julie is attending the conference this year to Sue. I okay. see. <laughs> but if Julie is attending, who is delivering the presentation of the CEO next week? Um, guess what? Oh, guess what? I am I am presenting with Hector, the new accountant. Accounting. Sounds great. So, I am informing the committee about it. It's all right. <clears throat> that that's that was really nice. Thank you. And maybe we can have some other participants. One team more. I'm going to select Doris and Laura. Could you please? Yes. Okay. Who is going to be Peter? Job. Okay. Job. Let's go. Uh, hello. Hello, Henry. I have a question. Who is representing the company in the yearly conference? Hey, Peter. Well, Maria is, but Julie is attending the conference this year too. So. I see, but is. Uh, I see, but but if Julie is attending, who is delivering the representation for the CEO next week? Guess what? I am. I am presenting with Hector, the new accountant. So great. So great. So I am informing the committee about it. Thank you so much. Gracias. Muy bien hecho. Okay. Mm, we're going to check here. I'm sorry. Just give me a second. Just give me a second, please. We're going to have a practice. Vamos a tener una pequeña práctica, pero, but, before let's go with the speaking activity. Solo recordarles algo. Tu pronunciación está muy bien. Your pronunciation is wonderful. Hay detallitos, por ejemplo, committee, uh, guess what, cositas así. But um, a recommendation for you. Uh, take advantage of the commas, period, um, and some pauses. Hay que tomar ventaja de las comas, pausas y todo eso. Te voy a poner un ejemplo. Um, 
the first part. Y eso les va a ayudar a ustedes a, a, a sonar todavía con más confianza. Uh, let's see. Esta también. Look at this. Hello, Henry. I have a question. Who is representing the company in the yearly conference? ¿Se dan cuenta? Hello, Henry. I have a question. Who is representing the company in the yearly conference? Eso es pausado. Si no fuera con pausa, sería así. Hello, Henry. I have a question. Who is representing the company in the yearly conference? No necesariamente se trata de que sea rápido. Si no bien pronunciado y con pausa, si eso les va a dar cierto toque de personalidad a ustedes. Veamos la siguiente. Guess what? I am. I am presenting with Hector, the new accountant. ¿Verdad? En, en, en lugar de decirlo rápido, por ejemplo, guess what? I am, I am presenting with Hector, the new accountant. Entonces, I have noticed that in some academies, uh, they are focused on the fluency, but no in the correct intonation o poses a veces veo que en algunas academias principalmente para call centers eh, se enfoca mucho en la fluidez, quiere que lo digan rápido pero no con pausas so in, in my opinion pausas are very important because that reflects how eh, how secure you are las pausas representan la seguridad que ustedes tienen entonces si utilizamos las pausas, aparte que ustedes van a respirar mejor van a tener como cierta seguridad, ¿verdad? Y van a sonar súper genial. Ok, let's go with this. Picking activity. Do you think we are too dependent on technology? Ok, could it be? Mm, here we have some vocabulary. Device son, es un dispositivo. Addicted is addicto. Here we have, yeah, that could it be. I would like to, to know your opinions about this topic. Please text in the chat. I'm going to write what are, I'm going to listen and read your answers, please. ¿Creen que somos muy dependientes de la tecnología? ¿Cómo sería la tecnología? ¿Cómo sería la vida sin la tecnología? How could it be the life with Uh, the facilities that we have now. Okay, I'm going to wait for your answers. Espero sus respuestas.
Okay, here we have like uh, similar points of view. It is interesting how you express your ideas. Gracias, you start, and then Hector, please. Okay. Yes, because we get used to carrying out many activities supported by technological tools. Mm -hmm. Maybe that makes it uh, easier. Our job and our life, right, Gracia? Yeah, because for our job, the technology is very important in different areas. Nice. Yes, it is. Mm, Hector, please. And then Ricardo. I have today, we depend a lot on technology because it is already part of daily life. Uh, we are connected at the time, waiting for the email, phone number, sing trunks, if we communicate anywhere, we look for information and well, everything is at hand. Mm -hmm. That's correct. We are connected all the time. And for example, we are waiting for uh, an email or even a transaction. A veces las transacciones bancarias. We are waiting for the notifications. We are uh, waiting for the for the evidence of something, right? But in the past, if you wanted to send an mail, un correo, it took like um, a couple of days. Tomaba un par de días, right? So yeah, it is. And even there were, I remember when I was a kid, I saw something that, it, that was called Telegram. Había un telegrama, que no era un correo, pero sí era un formulario, un formato que tenía Antel. Y lo podías enviar y cobraban. It costed like, I guess, five cents every word. Creo que contaba, costaba como cinco centavos cada palabra, algo así. I remember kind of that. So... You have to be very specific on that. You ask for that format in Antel, you paid, and there was a, a person who delivers that telegram to the other person. Era como una carta, pero ya con un formato y todo eso. Okay, um, thank you, Ricardo, and then we go with Wendy. Okay, Nelson, nice that you are at home. Perfect, thank you for telling. Thank you, Ricardo. Okay. Uh, it's absolutely nowadays technology is a fundamental tool in high school and work and life in general. Otherwise, we could not have classes via Zoom, for example. For example, that's a good example. Uh, I don't know how many of you did you go to the library or national library, la Biblioteca Nacional. When I was at high school, I remember I used to go there. And it took like one hour or 40 minutes to look for information. Tomaba algo de tiempo, buscar información. Yes. Right. Yes. It, or in, in if you wanted for the, um, there were some books you have to read. And now in the internet, you can look it for, yeah. You, you, you can. En la biblioteca de las universidades, este, tocaba ir a buscar libros y, sí, y a veces había... Pocos ejemplares, tenía que esperar uno que el otro lo desocupara. Ya, yeah, ya. Yeah. Sí, 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 recuerdo eso. Y te daba, y esperabas un par de días, bueno, creo que más de una semana, no sé cuánto, o dos semanas, sí, esperaba. Yeah, I remember that. All time. Sí. En definitiva, en definitiva. Thank you. Pero tenemos más experiencia con las redes del tigre. Thank you, Ricardo. Perfecto. Ya. Yeah. Wendy en Luz. When? Yes, because technological tools are very useful for communication and contribute a lot to the professional development of each person who uses them productively. Wow, interesting word. Productively. Productivamente, es un adverbio. Nice, Wendy. So... The, there is the technology. There are a lot of devices and different tools, but depends how employees or students can apply those tools, right? Because there is, it is easier now to be a student. It is easier now than in the past. They have more access for information than we had. 
So that's it. Thank you, Wendy. And Luz, and after Ivan. Please, Luz. Yes, uh, for example, today the children no can lie without Android mm -hmm. cell phones. Yeah, you remember the, 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 the previous cell phones, the, the, the celulares anteriores que teníamos. The only game that it had was the snake. Creo que había un jueguito de una serpiente or something like that. That was yes. the only one. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, you remember. Ah, yeah, a good cell phone. Ese era bien resistente. Tiro Chuck Norris. Yeah, very nice uh, cell phone. But now, um, if you notice, when you want to buy a cell phone, specifically the kids, the children, they look for the quality of the camera, this the the, the space, right? And the how well the quantity of RAM and I don't know the, the number of Android, a lot of things. But imagine how can it be? Eh, solo un detalle, Luz, se dice children. Okay. Can not. Mm -hmm. Children cannot, cannot live mm -hmm. without Android cell phone. Yeah. Se imaginan los, los niños de ahora con un celular de, de hace, ¿qué? 15 años. No, no le hacen get, caso. No, <laughs> they, they, they get crazy. Es, es loca. Ok, thank you. Yeah, ahí lo tienen, ahí lo tendrían de cuña de puerto. Thank you. Iván y Ana Cristina. Yes, there's a depend of the cell phone technology that when can go anywhere without it. Mm -hmm. It is. And you, you go to a different part, you... It, it was a process because at the beginning, the cell phone was not so part of uh, your personal things when you go out. But now it is so necessary to have it everywhere. It's very strange to see a person going out of their house with a cell phone. Pero una persona salir de su casa sin celular es extraño. It's, well, it's not that normal. But in the past, it was very normal. Ana, Cristina, and Brian. Okay, Ana. Currently. Okay. Yes. Currently, in order to reduce wearing time, companies use technology, such as online systems, for collection, billing, etc., and personally, the use of telephone and the internet has become essential. Essential, yeah, that's it. Imagine uh, a lot of examples. A lot of examples. You can, as you mentioned, the billing, verdad? El tema de cuentas, de pago. Uh, it is easier now, and it's, it is essential because it can save you time. Te ahorra tiempo. For example, you can pay your bills from electricity, from ANDA, from any other uh, thing. You can pay it with the application of the bank, right? So mm -hmm. it is essential, yeah? yeah? And you save time instead of going to the bank. And you take like one hour, two hours, making a line, so you can do some other things. You are okay, Anna, mm -hmm. thank you. Good example. Brian and Laura. Well, uh, just because everyone depends on their mobile cell phones or other uh, technology and applications for her life in general. Mm -hmm. It's true. Imagine now uh, in the past, if you wanted to, to, to watch a movie, you had to wait uh, until you go to, to your house, your home. If you have cable, nice. Uh, if not, you had to use DVDs or something like that. And now you have any, what, Netflix, HBO, Disney application in your phone. And that's just one example how many applications you have. Thank you, Brian. Laura. And then Joanna. Oh, yes, yes because it makes the... Things allow easy easier. for e easier. In esa tenía ah, easier, <laughs> easier, easier, easier yeah. for us 
uh, but it is necessary that takes some time um, with I technology, for example, uh, coffee with friends uh, with I uh, phone. Mm -hmm. And I will tell you something, Laura. Uh, sometimes so you, you have like, you don't have too much time to spend with friends or your grandpa, your grandma, your kids. So it is necessary to put your cell phone away in another part and share, and share time. Enjoy it's that fair. time. Yeah, that's it. Uh, unfortunately, now we are too dependent that we are just watching what happens with, with the news or on the uh, social media. That's it. Imagine to, to, to have a good conversation with our cell phone. Good. Just exactly. have a coffee. Thank you, Laura. Joanna and Imelda. Okay, in my opinion, yes, because technology makes many things easier for use, such as online shopping, bank account payment, researching a topic, and about how communicating with people who are far from use. Definitely, yeah, definitely. I totally agree. Yeah, shopping, that's another. Mm -hmm. you, you can. A purchase or buy different articles and it is easier yeah definitely thank you Imelda and Wilma uh, yes because uh, everything involves technology and company have to be us that just like to be able opera opera Operate in different areas. Operate in different areas. areas. Yes. And like technology pushes the company to update. Sí, como que la tecnología, la misma tecnología presiona a la, la compañía a actualizarse. Por ejemplo, database, la base de datos. Imagine in the past, eh, you had to go to the city hall, a la, a la alcaldía, and ask for personal papers, ¿verdad? pedir a cualquier documento legal o parte de nacimiento you, the, the files were very different than now los archivos de antes eran bien diferentes a los de ahora so imagine just one of the examples thank you ok Wilmer y Miguel ok uh, yes because it make our task easier uh -huh. Ajá, easier eh, voy a comentar sobre esa palabra. Es un adjetivo. Uh -huh. Importante ese adjetivo. Ok. Easy es fácil. A veces cuando dice... Esta es una canción de The Eagles, de las águilas, y también es una forma de decir Take it easy, es como calmate, relájate. Take it easy, tómalo con calma. Pero easy es el adjetivo. Easier es el adjetivo comparativo que significa más fácil. Por eso dice, ah, es que es más fácil. It is easier, easier. So, thank you. Eh, we'll met, mm, Miguel, and we finish with Nelson. And yes, because all activities we make daily need a technology. Mm -hmm. Almost uh, uh, all the, the, the activities. And if we don't use technology, we take more time. Nos toma más tiempo si no usamos la tecnología. Definitely. And Nelson? <laughs> My opinion personal. We are so dependent on technology that we walk with the phone the, on, in our hands, waiting or watching video without seeing that in happening around us. Definitely. Definitely. And that's why there are a lot of uh, fines the, for the drivers. Por eso que yeah. hay, hay bastantes eh, multas Accident. para los conductores. A lot of accidents. Even um, the love of your life can be in front of you. El amor de tu vida puede estar enfrente y la gente, mm, they don't pay attention. So, <laughs> well, perfect. Good example, Nelson. Thank you. Okay, my friends, now that we talked about technology, we're going to check this. We already um, pay attention on this conversation. We have um, present uh, continuous, right? 
and already I explained you the way it is. Ya les expliqué. Subject, sujeto, verbo to be, verb be, el verbo con ing. So, here we have unscramble, and this word is very important for you to memorize it. Importante que memoricen esta palabra. Ok. Cuando decimos scramble, significa enredado, revuelto, desorganizado. Por eso, los huevos revueltos se dice scrambled eggs. Scrambled eggs. ¿Ok? Solo la palabra scramble significa enredar, desordenar. Yesterday, uh, we were studying about prefixes. Estudiamos los prefijos ayer. Entonces, miren, on scramble se vuelve lo contrario. Ya no se trata de desordenar, sino que ordenar. ¿Verdad? Si le dicen scramble, significa ah, desorden, revuelvo. Pero on scramble significa ordena, o sea, no desordena. So, in this case, we have to unscramble the following words to create sentence. O sea, tenemos que desenredar todas estas palabras y formar oraciones. Number one. Is Jose tomorrow receiving the new workers? Mm, it doesn't make sense. But here we have Jose is receiving the new workers tomorrow. Okay. I'm going to give you a couple of seconds. Le doy un par de segundos. Take a look at these sentences. We're going to organize them. Vamos a organizarlos. Vamos a ordenar las palabras. Le doy unos 10 segundos para que le dé una revisada. Please try to have like one or two options. Ok, tenemos a Gracia, que no quiere que le ganen la de ella. Ok, Gracia. Tell us. Which one? Uh, the second. Second, ok. Mark is sending the letter next week. Yep. Thanks. Mm -hmm. The next. Thank you so much. That it's correct. We have Ricardo. Okay, Richard. Tell us. The third. Mm -hmm. Jay is working tonight on the report. Mm -hmm. What would I say on the report tonight? Okay. It means it's tonight. Sí, aunque todos la tienen, pero ese es lo tricky, ¿verdad? Ajá, pero es, but yes. Aunque si ponemos tonight, estarías como enfocando más en que esta noche más que en el reporte, pero aquí sería en los reportes. Yeah. Thank you, Richard. Okay. Very nice. Good, good. Eh, Nelson. Uh, number five. Let's go with number five. Marina is organizing the presentation in the afternoon. Okay. Mm -hmm. Easy. Right. Okay. That's correct. Thank you. Okay, who else? We have four and six. Come on. Four. Any other volunteer? Okay, four. Who? Luz. <laughs> sí, Wal Walter is thinning today the check. Okay, Walter White is sería signing. Ya le voy a explicar la diferencia de ese verbo. Signing, yeah, uh, the checks. Today. Good one. El... What about? Sí. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, y Elise. Mm, six. Or which one? Walter. Walter East. I'm sorry. Yeah, that's it. Walter East. Lo más importante se me olvidó.
Thank you. Thank you for correcting me. Mm -hmm. It's signing the checks today. Okay, what about Guillermo? Any other? Guillermo is mm -hmm. going to the band tomorrow. Hmm. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, practically, here we have the sentences. You did it really good. Um, okay, it's a verb. Sin es cantar. Como una película animada, que es bastante bueno, recomendable. Singer significa cantante. Sign significa dos cosas. Significa señal. Por ejemplo, traffic, sign que es señal de tráfico, pero también significa firmar, firma, sign, eso es firmar. Y signature significa firma, ok, es el sustantivo, firma y sign, firmar, ¿verdad? So, if you not seen a document and there is a part where is signature, cuando el documento diga signature, ahí va la firma. So, sign, 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 ¿cómo decir? Sí, no, no se me ocurre nada. Sign. Ok. Let's move. Ok, just 30 minutes, solo 30 minutos, and we say goodbye. Ok. Um, as I want explaining, uh, we already studied present simple, ya estudiamos el presente simple, ¿verdad? Eh, aquí vamos a ver unos ejemplos del presente simple. Mm, let me check. Let's see if we can have good ideas about this. Let me check if we have good information here. No. No, no vamos a saltar esto. But practically, prácticamente aquí tenemos que el presente simple lo que hace es eh, facts or things that are always true or generally true. Cosas que son verdades o generalmente eso es innegable. But uh, present continuous se refiere a cosas que está pasando en el momento o que va a pasar en el futuro. Yeah, basically that, that's the, the point. But better this. Mejor nos vamos a esto. Okay, as I was explaining before, como les estaba explicando antes, tenemos eh, un par de, 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 de escrituras, de estructuras. Okay, we have will. Para el will, es, el uso es bastante fácil. Lo único que hacemos es ubi ubicar la palabra will y sería así. I will go to the beach in December. Voy, eh, iré a la playa en diciembre. El going to es que se utiliza inicialmente para mm, fechas seguras y que eh, van a pasar pronto. I am going to go to the beach on Saturday. But present continuous, pero el presente continuo tiene dos funciones. I am going to the beach the, this weekend. Fíjense bien. Voy a ir a la playa este fin de semana. Aquí estamos hablando de diciembre. Aquí el sábado 27, pero aquí estamos hablando ya este fin de semana. I'm going to the beach this weekend. También el present continuous tiene otra función acerca del presente. Por ejemplo, I am drinking water. O yo puedo decir ahorita, teacher, what are you doing? ¿Qué estás haciendo, teacher? I'm drinking coffee. Estoy tomando café. ¿Ok? Entonces, ese es algo que puede ser un poquito confuso. Present continuous has two functions. Dos funciones del presente continuo. Eh, sobre un futuro cercano y de una actividad que está pasando. Uh, an activity that is happening in this moment. Una actividad que está pasando en este momento. Okay. So, let's move. We have just 29 minutes. 29 minutes. And we say, dígame. Yep. I got a question. In the going to. Yep. The sentence is. I am going to go to the beach. Mm -hmm. Así es. Yeah. 
Sí, okay. eh, se dice así porque el going to es un, es un auxiliar. Siempre necesitas el verbo. En cambio, el presente uh -huh. a el go ya tiene el ing. En lugar de eh, I'm going to go to the beach, puedes decir I'm going to swim. Uh -huh. Voy a nadar en la playa. El going to es voy a, ¿verdad? Uh -huh. Voy a. Uh -huh. El uh -huh. will es yo iré. Iré, ajá. Uh -huh. Iré a la playa. El otro es yo voy a ir a la playa. Uh -huh. Ok, thank you. Ok, that's it. Yes, my friend. Entonces son estructuras que van a ver eh, el siguiente módulo, creo que lo van a ver. Módulo number three. That could be. Creo que van a ser con otro teacher, pero si es así, sé que van a ir bastante bien, sin ninguna duda. Ok, my friends, let's continue. And here we have some other part. Tenemos worksheet, tenemos por acá. Y bueno, como les he explicado, ¿verdad? Tenemos el, el present continuum, ya vimos el afirmativo. The negative es I am not, you are not, he is not, y así sucesivamente. Pero puede ser eh, short form, the contraction, la contracción, que sería you aren't en lugar de you are not. He isn't, ¿verdad? En lugar de he is not. Pero aquí depende. Y aquí, recordando nuevamente, que hay verbos en los que principalmente si una E, solo una E, cambia por ING. Y ejemplos de estos, we can check here. Uh, leave, have, both. Ok. Pero hay otros que son fáciles, por ejemplo, enter, normalmente solo se le agrega ING. Um, another could it be start ¿Eh? ING starting pero hay otros que sí ¿verdad? que se le agrega y la, los que son como se llaman normalmente de una sílaba por ejemplo skip se le agrega la otra P la última consonante se duplica van get ok That's it. Para que tenga una buena noción. Ok. And now let's go with the worksheet. Vamos aquí a las. Vamos. Acá a estas. Tenemos dos. ¿Cómo se llama? Déjenme ver. Ok. Sí, tenemos un par de estas. Vamos a completar este prim pr primero. First of all, ok. Easy here. We're going just to say like this. Uh, my mother is cooking. Ok. Easy. Easy. My mother is cooking. So, this is just an example. Mm -hmm. Okay, you tell me. Está fácil, este demasiado fácil, diría. Le voy a buscar otra más difícil, mejor. Demasiado so fácil. You tell me the number. Me dicen el número. Okay, Nelson, please. Uh, number four. Mm -hmm. It is flying. Yeah. Elegí otro de un solo. Other number. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Number. Number. Um, number six. Okay. She's eating. Mm -hmm. Eating. Mm -hmm. Eating. Mm -hmm. Eat. Yeah. Eating. Thank you, my friend. Very well done. Okay, who else? You tell me. Wilmer. Okay, Wilmer. Select two. Two numbers. Okay, uh, number nine. Mm -hmm. I am walking. Walk, yeah. Walking. Mm -hmm. 
any other? Otro que veas un poco fácil. No te compliques. <laughs> eh, ten. You. Or... Oh, come on. Bueno, si no piénsalo, ya te pregunto, ¿ok? No problem. Ok, okay let's listen to Gracia and then Joana. Ok, Gracia. Gracia, are you there? Ok, if Gracia is not available, let's go with Joana and then Laura. Ok, Joana. Ok, number seven. Mm -hmm. Pan is playing. Thank you. Any other? ¿Tienes otro? Así me um, vamos de dos en dos. Tengo dudas en la de para utilizar, por ejemplo, este el, el right. La uh -huh. siguiente, number eight. Uh -huh. Adelante. Con dudas, pero hazlo. <risa> es... Eh, vamos a ver esto es como casarte Estoy muy seguro al 100% aventurarse. es un salto de fe Ajá. no, 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 teacher me doy con no, esto no te casas verdad. todavía okay. no, no problem no, mejor así a todos a todo llega la hora ok, okay. Eh, right. we are writing uh -huh. right, okay. writing thank you Ok, vamos con Jasmine and then Laura. Porque okay, le había dicho Laura. Ok, Jasmine. Number 11. Uh -huh. No sé si es así. He Adelante. is sleeping. Uh -huh. Fácil, ya viste. Number eh, 40. 40. 40, porque 40 es 40. Ajá. No, 40. I. I, I am listening. Sería. Uh -huh. Thank you. Laura, and then we go with David. Vamos a ver. Es que ya la, ya la dijeron la que iba a decir. Vamos Consejo a ver. de vida, Laura. Siempre deben de tener opciones. Siempre, toda la sí. vida. <risa> eh... Cualquiera. Adelante. Si he sing, sing, singing, singing. Yes. Mm -hmm. He singing. Yep. Singing. Any other? Otro. Mm, no, la otra no sé. Tengo duda. Okay, no problem. Uh, Thank you, Laura. Uh -huh. We speaking. La serie la número. 17 speaking. Mm -hmm. Okay. We we are speaking. Yeah, we are speaking. Thank you. We are speaking. Yeah, that's true. Thank you. David, you go. Number 16. Mm -hmm. Ping is looking at the cat. And number 18. Mm -hmm. I am going to school. Yep. Thank you. Okay, Gracia, you have some other. Tienes otro, Gracia? Yes, they are reading. Number one. They are reading. Thank you. Ricardo? You have some other? Number 12. Okay. I am sitting. Double T. Definitely. It is double. Double. Perfect. Any other, Ricardo? Um, the number 15. Mm -hmm. He's standing. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay. Jasmine, you have some other. Number 10. Mm -hmm. You are writing. Thank you. Any other? Okay, we have 
three, five. Yes, just three and five. Okay, I'm going to ask four. Maybe we can have Miguel. I say five. That's right. Mm -hmm. My father is quite big. Mm -hmm. Then what about number three? Okay, number three. Mm -hmm. We are drawing. Mm -hmm. Thank you, my friends. As you notice, it is not that complicated. If we want to make these sentences negative, we have to write just not. Solo tenemos que agregarle el not después del verbo to be, aquí. Ok. Easy peasy. Casi como que si fuera con, con, con el presente, con el verbo to be. Tenemos que agregarle not, we have to add the word not after the verb be, después del verbo to be. Y ella tiene la negativa. I am not sitting. You are not writing. Uh, she is not singing. Pam is not playing. And so on. Easy peasy. No hay complica complicaciones. Not complication. Okay. So very nice. And here we have this. Let me check. We go with the last speaking activity. Vamos con la última. Creo que las preguntas de ahora están un poquito interesantes. Do you think parents are too permissive with their children nowadays? ¿Consideras o piensas que los padres, parents, no es parientes, es padres, father and mother, son muy permisivos con sus niños ahora en día? Ok, you tell me yes, no. Why? What is the reason you, you consider? Or you think in that way? I'm going to wait for your answers, my friends. Espero sus respuestas en el chat.
We have already eight answers. Yeah. Very nice. Gracias. No, 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 no. Let me see. Yes. Mm, es que estoy viendo quién escribió primero. Depende de technology. Uh, yes, gracias. You are the first. You are almost the first in every speaking <laughs> activity. Thank you. Please, you go and then Wendy. Okay, yes. Some people are very distracted and do not pay attention to what their children are doing. Mm -hmm. Maybe in because... Mm -hmm. In computer, laptops. Yeah, we don't we don't notice what the contact that they have with what information they have, what type of videos, uh, what type of people they, they have as friends, right? Very, exactly. very dedicated. Some games too. Games are maybe violated uh, well, uh the different aspects, negative aspects especially. But we are happy because they are distracted and they they are not um what they are not doing something to worse. Quizá como no, no, no lo ven haciendo cosas malas, solo lo ven con el celular. Yeah, like okay, continue. Thank you, gracias, Wendy and Jasmine. Okay, yes, no, most of them are permissive to keep them calm, and in many cases, the values are lost and the children no longer listen to their parents. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, very interesting word. Uh, to keep them calm. Maybe uh, values are, if we compare the values in the families nowadays and uh, with 50 years ago, it was kind of different. Of course, there are some good attitudes that we have changed. I actitudes que ahora tenemos que son positivas, but yeah, the kids don't respect parents or teachers or grandpas, grandparents as well. You should that that's very common uh, currently. Thank you, Jasmine, and then Luz. Uh, yes, most parents uh, today are too locked, Alex, verdad? Too late. They give their children a lot of freedom. Mm. It is important to give to give space to kids. Yes, that's important. But they have uh, freedom to take decisions, and they are not ready to take different decisions. Some of them, yeah, but not all. And yes, that that's something that they. Parents don't establish limits. Mm -hmm. You notice, and, and that that's very that that's very dangerous. No establecer limits. Thank you, Jasmine. Um, Hector, okay, Luz, adelante. I know. Espero que todo salga bien con, con su emergencia. Okay, gracias por avisar, Luz. Uh, Hector, please, and then Ricardo. Okay. Yes, I'm not because there are flexible parents and delicate parents. Those who are flexible tend to neglect their children in education and daily chores and the delicate or and have them a little more control and quite great responsibility. Mm -hmm. Yeah, two, uh, we can say uh, like two different aspects, right? One, that they are so flexible right and some other that are delicate and very well a key word in here una palabra clave is daily chores um if you accustom si acostumbramos if you accustom to kids to be responsible with the chores in 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 uh, different homes or houses and uh, when they are adults they are going to be responsible verdad entonces eso es un um, es una muestra, right? And that, that, that's totally uh, right, Hector. Thank you. Ricardo and Brian. Okay, I think so. 
I consider that there is a lot of freedom with respect to social network. The so, Hello, I'm sorry. Tuve problemas. Eh, ¿Puedes escucharme, Ricardo? Hello. Can you listen? Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I had some difficulties with my internet. Okay, thank you, uh, Ricardo. Mm, okay. okay. Uh, freedom. Social networks are so dangerous. Yes. Uh, yes. Expose yourself. Look at this. Expose. Uh, like personal information, videos, photography, and there are a lot of people that they are sick, mental sick, hay gente muy enferma mentalmente, and definitely mm. kids are, uh, are the, yeah, they, they are exposed, as you mentioned, I, they are exposed, yes, and so that we have to be monitoring what they mm. do, and the people who they have contact, con quien tiene contact, yeah, yes. of course, Ricardo, thank you. Brian and Joanna. Uh, just because little by little, the strong hand and the serious way uh, of raising a child, uh, how to create it, how to, how do you say criar? Raise. Mm -hmm. How to raise uh, your children uh, was lost uh, from the generation to generation. Uh, it changed because new parents do not want to be as hard with with their children as mm -hmm. they were were with them. Yeah. Uh, I guess the previous generation they did uh, some things that they were negative, and that affected us. Nos afectó. Okay. Raise, criar, ¿verdad? Cuando alguien está creando, ¿ok? So that's it. So the way we were raised, la manera como fuimos criados, I consider that we can find negative aspects, but also we have positive aspects. And because we want to be better, or some parents, they want to be better than their parents, they change the way of the raising and cambiado la manera de, de, de crianza. And I mean, they don't take into account different aspects or traditions in the past, but they are necessary. Okay, so they want to be as hard. That's the key word. Esa es la palabra clave. Uh, or the words, keywords. They do want to be as hard with their children as their parents were with them. And I guess that's an extreme, a dangerous extreme. Es un extremo bien peligroso de eso. Yeah, mucha libertad, too much freedom. Good point, Brian. Joanna and Anna Cristina. Yes, because many many parents allow their children to do what they want, and many times that is not healthy for their education since they become arrogant. Mm -hmm. They they are not humble. Uh, they it is difficult for them to obey, ¿verdad? Es como más difícil que obedezcan, right? And ya no se enseña con tanta humildad, so to be humble is very important, but it is not, it doesn't mean that uh, they're, they are going to be slaves, ¿verdad? Ser uh, humilde o también ser obediente no quiere decir que son esclavos de nadie, okay? So that's it, but that's another extreme, to be arrogant. Good. Good ideas, Joana, Ana Cristina y Miguel. 
Okay. I believe that not in all cases, because some parents care a lot about dedicating time to their children, instilling in them responsibilities and good education. Mm -hmm. Not in all cases. We can't say that this generation is lost as a complete, right? Because there are some parents that they are informing. Um, a lot of parents also, they are watching some different experiences, some videos or reading information that can help, right? And that's another positive aspect, but maybe I may say that is a, a low number in the percentage. Numero bajo en algún por, en porcentaje de padres, but yeah, there are sí. some good parents as well. Y hay padres que también están sanando, right? So they want to be better. That's it. Thank you, Christy. Eh, okay. Miguel and Wilmer. Okay, Miguel. Mm, yes, because the parents looking for distraction for the children. Yeah, distraction. I remember when I was in the COVID, uh, well, the system of education changes a lot of things, but after the pandemic times, a lot of parents, believe me, a lot of parents didn't want their children at home. No querían a sus niños en, en la casa. Los mandaba. They were not okay. Of course, there, 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 there are a lot of aspects, muchos aspectos, but que no tenían que lo cuidar. But there are a lot of children that were very, but very uh, hyperactive, quizás un poco hiperactivos. They were like tired. Oh, ya estaban cansados de ellos. Wilmer and Ivan. Uh, okay. Uh, yes, because today gener generation is very different from what it is was before. Before, totally different. Um, that's that, that that's true. Thank you, Wilmer. Ivan and Laura. We finish with Laura. Okay, Ivan. Yes, a lot of parents now alone their children anything. If the child cry, give the him that they ask for, it. whether this on cell phone or another else, so that he doesn't cry anymore. Yeah, there are a lot of uh, parents that they want the children to be in silence, not crying, not arguing, ni peleas, que le dan todo. They give everything what they want. Of course. Thank you, Ivan. We finish with Laura. Terminamos con Laura, please. Oh, Seria. Yes, because we are more flexible in some situation, but it is good to have limit. Yes, it is good to establish limits, uh, definitely. And Maybe. we need to do that in this generation. Sé que es difícil, pero es necesario. Thank you, Laura. Thank you. Good opinion. So, um, voy a tomar la asistencia tomando en cuenta las, los mensajes que enviaron, ¿verdad? De acuerdo a eso, ¿ok? So, está bien, Nelson, no problem. Thank you. Tú siempre participas bastante, Nelson. No te preocupes. Eh, recuerden eh, seguir con las, ¿cómo se llama? Con las tareas, ¿verdad? Ya solo nos faltan nueve clases. Nine classes. And we say goodbye, ¿ok? El día de ahora se me quedaría... Imelda, ¿estás por aquí, Imelda? No sé. Sí, aquí estoy. Sí, aquí estoy. Okay, te, te quedas, please, unos sí. momentos. El resto, see you tomorrow. Lo veo mañana. Have a good night. Pasen okay. feliz noche. Bye, Very bye, my night. friends. Descansen. Bye, bye. Okay. See you. Good night. Good night. Good night. Ok, Imelda, um, quiero consultarte eh, si has tenido dificultades con la plataforma. Fíjese que con la plataforma ahorita voy bien. Lo único de que la vez pasada se me fregó la computadora. Y desde entonces uh -huh. pues, eh, tenía problemas para, para contestar. A veces uh -huh. me sacaba también. Pero ahora me estoy con conectando en una tablet. Ahorita ya me estoy poniendo como al tanto. Pero en la plataforma voy bien. Ok, me alegra. Eh, ¿Tienes alguna duda de con respecto a algún tema? Eh, ¿Alguna confusión? 
Algunas cosas, bien? cuando usted está dando las indicaciones, no le entiendo. Ok. Vaya, pero, pero si te das cuenta, también la, las doy en español. Ajá, pero ajá, en el momento que las está dando las indicaciones, este, después sí usted las da en español, pero así yo siento que cuando las está dando en inglés, algunas cosas le causan y algo otras por lógica, siento yo no que... No te preocupes. <ríe> no te preocupes, Imelda. Eh, recuerda que es módulo 2. Eh, sí. No sé si la, me comentaban que la teacher anterior sí les hablaba todo, solo en inglés y yo he estado con... Bueno, tengo mi, 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 mi tiempo con inglés corporativo y si te das cuenta ahora les hablo un poquito más en inglés que las primeras clases. Sí. Sí. Pero, pero, pero voy como no, no los conozco, ¿verdad? Eh, intento hacer ese cambio, ese switch. Y si te das cuenta, ya están participando más, tienen más seguridad. Eh, no te frustres y no te sientas mal si no captas toda la información. Lo importante es que tengas ideas, captes. Ya vas a ver que de aquí a la, los últimos días de clase vas a captar aún más. Y recuerda también que mi metodología es un poquito diferente. Sí, eso es está por bien. Eso. Ajá, es por eso que quizás las indicaciones son extrañas, son diferentes, ¿verdad? Pero creo que, que, que vas bien, ¿verdad? Creo que vas bien con tus notas. Este, recuerda siempre conectarte, ¿verdad? Porque, sí. ¿verdad? Los minutos van contando de conexión, ¿verdad? Y todo eso. Así que, no, ánimo. Lo importante es repasar. Eh, siempre practica lo de las speaking activities. Eh, sí. Eh, las cuestiones gramaticales, los puntos gramaticales no te cuestan mucho. Ya viste las oraciones, no, no. ¿verdad? Sí, ahí estaba. Eh, de hecho, voy haciendo capturas y después le voy poniendo apuntes. Sí, adelante. Cada quien tiene su manera de, de, de cómo hacerlo. Si ustedes ven, eh, si te das cuenta también, dejo un buen rato algunas imágenes, ¿verdad? Sí. De, de, de esto, para, que, para que puedan tomar nota, captura, y eso les puede servir para después dar una repasada. Y si tienen dudas con el tema de tareas, el examen y todo eso, pues, no hay problema. Recuerda sí. que nos quedan nueve clases. Eh, tienes que ir al día con las tareas. Solo nos quedan las tareas de la unidad 3, 4 y el examen final. Y terminamos, ¿ok? Ok. Excelente, Imelda. Entonces, eh, te vería mañana. Ánimo, ¿verdad? Ya casi sí. terminamos. ¿Verdad? Hay que hacer un poquito de sí. esfuerzo para salir bastante bien. Sí, gracias. Peche. Perfecto. Imelda, te felicito y nos veremos mañana. See you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. Good night.